bad trade paperback flocking to the I'm joined by the amazing Allison O'Toole, Dan Price, Andre Owen, Fred Kennedy, Chip Zdarsky. Chip, thanks for coming. What's up, folks? Welcome to my sketchy goodness. Keith, thanks for joining me once again. Of course. Thanks for having me. Absolutely and always. Um... So yes, for the folks tuning in who have never seen this show, this is My Sketchy Goodness, brought to you by Keith Grachow. Uh, Keith is an amazing artist, cartoonist, um, marketer. Uh, you've done marketing materials, design marketing materials for toys. You make comic books. You save the world occasionally, uh, do crazy things. Uh, and I'm just some schmuck who talks about comic books with people who like making them. Um we're both <laughs> schmucks. If we're gonna if we're gonna call ourselves that, we're both schmucks. All right, I like and, it. Uh, and yeah, so this is our show, my sketchy goodness, where uh, born out of the fact that Keith doodles uh, to get inspiration, to find figures, find ideas, uh, and then we just kind of like talking, uh, and so we thought we would bring the two ideas together. Um, so Keith, uh, you mentioned to me before we started, sort of what you were gonna draw. Um, mm -hmm let the people know yes uh let me share my screen real quickly here oh for sure um so i was uh i was telling uh oh it's it's up there okay you have my screen yeah awesome. right there um <laughs> so i was saying to uh conrad before we started that uh i was having a bit of a, a tough week creatively um you know personally everything's fine um, but sometimes artists go through, you know, you just, uh, the imagery just doesn't flow from the, the brain or there's, uh, just not an incentive, uh, the, 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 you can, you can, uh, just have, have a lack of passion for, for whatever reason. Um, who knows? I mean, it's, everybody goes through, you know, highs and lows and, um, and, and artists, you know, as well, you have to have um, uh, techniques and, and rules in place so that you work through it, right? You have to have schedule uh, to make sure that even even though you may not um, uh, be working uh, as much as you'd like to, you can work around the schedule to, to uh, make sure you're still getting the work done. So this week I was like, I've been shifting things around, like I was going to take off this day, but... I figured I would do something. I kind of had energy to do stuff. So I was like, well, I might as well do stuff on my day off and then I'll take another day instead. And, you know, and then that kind of didn't happen. I've just been working through it. So I probably, oh, okay. probably need like a legitimate day off, which I will have. Um, but uh, I feel maybe a little burned out. Um, and it has nothing to do with the work I'm working on. I'm very excited for what I'm working on. It just sometimes it, it takes a little bit of uh, you know sometimes you 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 you're not as into it as you as other times right hundred um, percent and, and that's what's been going on this week so I thought I'd be honest about it because you know it's it's uh, we all go through it uh, and it's just how you go through it is really you know whether you whether you figure out a way to work around it you do other things you clean your house you you do other projects that don't require the same kind of um, brain power that something else might take, uh, whatever it is, but you get through it so you can keep on working um, versus going, well, I'm, I'm just not going to do this anymore and give up. Right now, you know, there are some creators who may walk away from a project if it's something yep. that they're not getting paid for uh, where they can, they need time away from it, which is okay. Um, but when you're, when you're on a deadline and you do have, uh, to to make sure you you um, you are getting paid and you have to make sure you're that your deadlines you still have to figure out a way through um, and so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Right on. I, I well yeah. Thank you for the honesty. Um, I, I think you know being a, a fairly uplifting or try to be a fairly uplifting uplifting and happy kind of guy. It's not something that I think has ever really come up on my show before, um, but it is a reality. Um, even I go through it when I'm editing stuff, um, when I'm putting shows together. Um, so, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I, I think for me, um, like you mentioned, some artists might step away from a project, do something else, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I find for me when I'm 
when I've done enough of, say, an edit on a, uh, an episode I'm working on or whatever, when I've done enough of an edit and my brain is fried and I'm sitting there going whatever and I'm finding myself sitting on my phone scrolling and then mm-hmm. looking up once in a while, doing three seconds worth of film work and then going back yep. to my phone. Um, yeah, that's a sign to me like, dude, you need to disengage because you're not doing it. Yeah. Um, and like, like for me personally, what I end up doing, um, I get up, uh, I go to my bedroom, which is just the immediately next room. Uh, and I'll be like, okay, make the bed, tidy that. And then it's okay, do dishes. And then usually it's put away the, the clean laundry. And then for some reason, once I've done those things, it's like, okay, cool. Sit, have a drink and get back to work. And my brain clicks in. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? What do you find works best for you? Not that it'll work for everyone, but what's your your thing, Keith? Um, yeah. So, like, I think we're talking about slightly different things. Like, um, if it's a matter of um, you're working uh, and you just need a break uh, because you've spent your your mm. you know whatever creativity. Uh, in that case, yeah. So for me, it's uh, I try to move around, you know, at least once an hour, um, get outside, walk the dog, um, watch, you know, like something, uh, watch something on TV or, or uh, on, on YouTube or something like that. Yeah. Um, just to recharge your, your uh, whatever um, you, you the, the juices, get those juices flowing again. Um I'm kind of talking also about like when you have, I I, I wouldn't call it artist block, but I guess that's kind of what it is a little bit, which is that it's not that I, I'm, um, and I don't feel, and, and, and everybody's different. Um, I don't necessarily feel like down, like, I'm not like, Mm -hmm. oh man, life's just, you know, I don't feel, I don't have, um, any kind of, um, mental health, um, that is, that is, um, making things more difficult, uh, for me to work. Like I don't, uh, my neurodivergence, I've got anxiety. I get anxiety. Um, I used to have depression and that, I, I, that's something that, um, over, over time I've been able to, to work on so that I don't, that very rarely happens. So this for me is, this for me is, is more of like, it's not so much what, personal like where i'm i'm things are in my life that i'm just like so so um preoccupied by that i can't create or even i i you know it's chemically uh that there's something going on within me that just is has a hard time um focusing or because you know like Mm -hmm. uh, i know artists have adhd and all that kind of stuff (laughs) like there's there's a lot of things that prevent artists from being able to get back to the drawing board of whatever that is. Um, and so for me, uh, what, what I'm kind of describing though, isn't necessarily that, um, it's more of, I, I may just be more or less a bit burned out, like where I've been go, 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 go for, for the last few months. And sometimes when I do give myself breaks, but um, there's a reason why um, it's important for people to kind of get away if they can, even if it's just for a day, do something mm-hmm. that is nothing to do with what you're what you do at home or in, at, for work. And then when you come back, you're like re, re um, energized. And I haven't okay. I don't know if I've done that properly. Um, and so um, especially and this is the the. I don't know if other creators go through this, but like when you're on like a tear, when you're so um, focused and just everything you're doing is, is just, it's coming out really well and you're, you're drawing or creating a lot of stuff is, is, is being created. Um, and, and that for me has been, I don't know, the last two or three months. Okay. Um, and then all of a sudden it's like, I kind of hit like a wall and, and I'm going, huh, I'm a little bit, um, uh, drained of, of, uh, stuff right now. Like, um, oh, interesting. And okay. so, yeah. And, 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 you know, like it'll, I can't tell you exactly what will, um, all of a sudden flip the switch back on. It, as I said, it's, it's oftentimes me getting away for a good day 
um, or um, having, or sometimes it's just me like, uh, like a TV or movie marathon or something, um, nice. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, uh, or, or it could be like, you know, you have a good conversation with somebody and they, and you, it just something like, uh, clicks in your brain. You're like, Oh, all yeah, right. I on. Didn't thought about it that way. And now you're like, I wonder if I can apply this to my art and, and that gets you going again. Right. It, it could be all different things. So, yeah. um, so for me, this, at this moment, it's just been, <laughs> But see, to, to what I was saying before, I still have to work. I still have to make sure that I'm keeping on schedule. And therefore, um, uh. I, I, I'm so really, it's probably a matter of me just kind of deciding like, OK, uh, Sunday or Monday, I'm just going to take a day and just do nothing. Right. Because as I said, the day that I was like going to take the full day off, I was like, well, maybe if I do some like traditional commissions, because I'm kind of wanting to do that. I was inspired to do it, yeah. but I wasn't inspired to be drawing at my desk. Um, so that may not have been enough time to, to actually get away. And um, so it's just now here's the thing, though. And this this is the for me, at least this is important. Anything I do create, it's still at the at, at it's the best um quality that i can put out and it, mm -hmm. i don't mean i don't think it's like a um it's not diminished from let's say something i did uh, uh when i'm like creatively uh on top it just it, i struggle to get um the work done so yeah like it's, it's a little harder than it normally would be but you're still getting there yeah exactly yeah so for you, you were saying, oh, you're looking at your, your phone every few seconds and then doing something. Do you find that like when you get into that zone, you're, you're, you're able to get a lot of work done in a shorter amount of time? Um, well, when I, when I hit the point where I'm looking at my phone and then I'm going back to whatever I'm doing and I, I go back, I, I find that's where I've hit a point where I'm mentally I'm checked out of that, like what I'm editing. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm looking for something else to do. And that's why for me, I'll get up. And so that I feel like I'm still productive, I'll, like I said, do chores, do something right. else, complete that. And I feel like for me, the act of having completed that, I can come back, sit down, um, and then plow through. Um, interestingly, what I find helps me like click in, like if I'm, I currently right now, um, tomorrow, actually, I'll probably do this. Um, I have a client who sent me a s whole set of revisions for a 30 minute episode I've, they've commissioned from me. And I'm basically, I today I procrastinated on it. Shouldn't have mm -hmm. done it, did it. Um, but tomorrow it's going to be like, okay, cool. Do make the bed so I don't have to think about it. Do the dishes. I don't have to think about it. And I will sit down here. I will put on um, lo fi, uh, lo fi girl specifically, like. Uh, if you've ever heard of it, I love that channel on YouTube. And then something about that music just lets me sit down and just go like mm. hit like flow state. Um, and then I can hammer through, do six hours straight of work as long as I can get myself to do it. Um, right. But yeah, like when I find myself looking at my phone, I'm creatively, I think exhausted and I don't want to do that work right now. And it's just like, you know, yes, I feel like I have to be here doing this, but my brain's like, gone it's that it's playing tetris it's scrolling yeah. tiktok yeah um that's sort of what i i do that's why like for me a little bit of music just go okay um, that's interesting yeah. yeah that being said real quick shout out paul kemp is back good afternoon gentlemen thank you hey, for doing paul. another great show in this series thank you for joining us paul yeah. much appreciated i should i should probably i let me start drawing um <laughs> and, and then we can yeah. keep up because like uh so uh, I was uh, telling Conrad earlier, I'm like a little bit, you know, it's not that I, I wouldn't want to doodle, but I also like to, there's other things I like to draw that are a little bit less um, brain drain for me. And I really enjoy um, the process. And one of them is to do portraits of people, like find an interesting face and draw it. Um, and I found uh, there's a uh, website and Instagram uh, um, a person called Earth's World. Their name is Earth. And you go to Instagram or you go to 
um, their website, and they take photo portrait photos of people at fairs. And so I'm going to be drawing the the fourth one down there, the the guy with the nice nice puffy hair there, uh, which, which is what I would probably look like if I let my hair um, out like that. So, um, oh, this is cool. and yeah, and so they they uh, give pr full permission for artists to. Uh, utilize their um, photos just as long as you give them some kind of, you know, recognition for where you got it from, right? Um, I, I commercially, um, that's, I don't know if, if commercially it's something that, that they would allow for you to do. I, I mm. don't, uh, I mean, it's something you could always reach out to, that, to them to go, hey, I've created a um, bunch of images I want to sell or something of your, you know, um, photos uh, and see what they say if they want to cut or whatever. But, um, you know, for, for your own practice and um, just just to be able to um, look at really cool people and, and uh, you know, uh, get some really cool caricature ideas and things like that. Um, I find I find that uh, this is a great uh, place to go. Um, I like to. This is this is where I sometimes will will play around with uh, different processes I'm working on, color processes, my workflow, um, or or just um, uh, you know like a different way to to think about uh, lines and things like that. So anyway. Uh, back to what we we're chatting about before uh, i was going to ask so you you had mentioned that you like to clean and do th things to you feel accomplished i guess um is that is that like how you start your day do you do like little things to get you started for for your day to feel accomplished um not always, but sometimes, yeah. Like it's, um, and and I can thank my mother for this one. Um, she actually might be tuned in on Instagram. I'm not sure, um, but uh, I how to explain this? Basically, every morning I wake up, and normally, because uh, I leave for work, I have to be there at six a.m. So I leave at like five thirty. Um, right, I wake up. I throw my sheets off i get up brush teeth get dressed all that normal stuff um and if i'm feeling particularly energetic and like i have time i will actually go to my side of the bed and like like make my half of the bed while my partner vanessa is still in the bed sleeping mm -hmm. um <laughs> if that's great yeah. Yeah. Um, if... I do the same thing. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm like, it... okay, I'm not the only one that does that. No, no. I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. Um, but uh, normally, like, if I have a day off or whatever and she leaves, uh, or say it's a weekend and we both get up, I, I'm very likely to get up and I'll make the bed. Um, it's mm -hmm. fairly rare that I don't. I believe it's my mother's fault that I do this, but I like it. Um and then, yeah, so I might do that. And then if I have something, yeah, like a, a, a thing I have to do, like make an episode. Um, if I'm researching for an interview that I'm doing, um, say like if, when I interviewed Chip Zdarsky, I, I need to focus on that. Um, I find if I have stuff in the house that is dirty, um, it bothers me. Um, mm, like, admittedly, right now, if I were to show you my desk, I've kind of... Well, I've got a bunch of comics and books beside me, which is normal. They're stacked, they're piled, they're together. But there's, you know, envelopes here and there, um, a camera. I've got my switch. I've got my microphones and then random doodads, my keys, whatever. Um, so, like, it, if I'm having a hard time creatively, like, if I, I can't get myself to do the work, what I end up doing is tidy my vicinity Um Hmm. Something about having done that makes me feel like I'm ready to just go and and I've prepared, um, and for some reason, like above and beyond all things, it's dishes. Um, I have a feeling that might just you know reflecting on myself. I've worked. My parents were both chefs by trade. 
Uh, and so one of my first jobs ever was in a kitchen at a private school. Hmm. And I was to basically a dish boy. Um, and so at home, my chore, like, you know, when I lived with my parents was dishes. Um, and then when I moved out on my own, you know, if when I was at home, if I didn't do it, my mom or my dad picked up the slack. I didn't have to think about it, but on my own, it was like, no, it's there. And like, there's nothing that bothers me more than like a destroyed, messed up kitchen with dishes piled up here and there. So I'll go in, I'll do them. And something about that is meditative for me. And then mm. once it's all done, I feel relaxed and it's like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Let's, you know what, let's do the next thing. Let's get to editing that. Let's research this person. Let's whatever I got to do and go. Um, it was a very long very long answer for basically yeah it's it's something I, I like to do um my partner vanessa would say i tidy very well i clean dishes good but i tidy very well um i'll make my desk tidy i'll make the the room behind me tidy uh not necessarily clean though <laughs> right right I, I, it's funny that so <laughs> the only job i've ever gotten fired from was from dishwashing <laughs> No well, way. Yeah, so I'm a little bit like when it comes to washing dishes, I'm I'm like uh not as um enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm a little scarred from that experience where I just remember the 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 owner was just like uh giving me some I was 13, so it's like one of my first jobs, and he was giving me some like life lesson about like peaches like being soft on the outside and hard in the inside and that's how life is. And I'm looking at him going, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, what are you, what are you trying to say? He's like, you're fired. I'm like, okay. Oh, what? <laughs> right. And I was just, I was just like, I, I mean, but that was just it. I was like, he was trying to be, I think he was trying to be kind uh, and, and, you know, let me down. And, and I was just like, I did not like doing it because for whatever reason I could, it was at a, um, like a diner. And mm -hmm. I could not get the grease out um, of, of like anything, like everything just felt greasy after I washed them. And that was, you know, fair point oh, yeah. and have greasy stuff. So, you know, at the time I was like, I, I, I was doing it the best I could. Maybe you didn't show me correctly, whatever. But um, also I was a 13 year old kid and probably, you know, I know I had a chip on my shoulder. Right. So um, <laughs> either way it was, it was, I didn't really care too much for the job and I didn't really, um, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't heartbroken that I got let go. Uh, it was just, there was at that time, thankfully there were plenty of jobs I could, uh, you know, try to get. So, yeah. um, yeah. So now today I'm not, it's, I mean, I, I don't mind cleaning the dishes, but it's at the same time, it's not like a comfort thing for me. It's more of like, well, they have to get done, but yeah, going to your point of like you're having um some habits when you first wake up one of the things that i try to do um is every day is try to keep with the same structure because for mm -hmm. me by doing that it makes me feel like i've accomplished things right so it's like getting up and doing the bed and putting your clothes on for the day um yep. working out and sometimes there are little things like, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, just just uh, like going outside with a hot uh, cup of, of water and just smelling the fresh air and listening to birds oh, yeah. and the things like that, that that I don't know, for me, at least, it's just something that um, makes me feel like I'm, I'm getting something done. And it's good for you to get that first dose of. Um, what is it? Um, uh, uh, what, what do they call uh, cortisol? It's, the, it's 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 to get you oh, awake. Serotonin. Oh, serotonin. Uh, oh, I think it is cortisol. I think it might be. Yeah. Um, so it just it gets you. It, you you have like um, things that that like the melatonin slows you down for the towards the end of the day, and I think cortisol gets you. And you get you know the sun, fresh air gets you going. Uh, if I'm incorrect. It, um, about the cortisol let me know but i think no, that period. is one one thing anyway um so yeah i mean uh but it is interesting uh I, I know i know that um you know some people struggle i i for a long time struggled with that kind of consistency um 
when when it came to um, I have to save this, don't I? Uh, That'd be good. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know that kind of consistency to um, get your day and, and uh, your day going, and then um, throughout the day, making sure you're you're doing certain things. Um, as I've gotten older and my health, you know, is, is more important to me and I want to make sure I'm doing everything I can to be as healthy as I can for as long as I can. I've uh, started taking some of these, I guess, rituals uh, much more seriously. Um, so what is today's date? Uh, April 11th. Yeah. 11th, Earth's world. Um, what's the number on that one? What you, uh, 04 11 2024. Right. The, but the name, uh, the number of that, the dude. Oh, He's... um, uh, Florida Strawberry Festival hyphen 104 forward slash forward slash March 9, 2024. 104. There we go. Every, they each have a number to them. So I always try to, yeah, there you go. That's it. Cool. Um, yeah. That's so, uncanny. Well, this is like, I'm not working, I'm not going for like realistic. I'm going for the essence of it. I'm going for yeah. like making an interesting composition. Um, you know, I mean, it's more for me, at least it's what's interesting. Uh, the, 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 the spotting of the blacks, uh, you know, the white, the black um, and uh, what, uh, your your eyes kind of fill in. I'll probably start to add some value to it as well. But um, just in this initial, uh, if it feels like the person to to a degree, then I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't have to be like you know realistic in regards to like where everything is the play the the uh, placement of his features and stuff. To me, that's not as fun. I used to do that where I'd be like trying to photorealistically get everything exactly and and you know there is a there is a, a value to that it helps with your you know eye hand coordination and, and seeing things um that are there yeah. but that doesn't interest me as much anymore i like i like to play around with um, what i'm doing and, and um use this brush in a way that's very loose and it just it creates some really fun interesting little uh textures and lines and things like that so um but uh yeah so is that is that do you have like that kind of stuff like rituals that you're you're i guess the cleaning of the dishes and the um you know things things that help make you feel accomplished for a day kind of thing yeah yeah like it it's odd if I feel really good and I'm just like ready to jump into work. Like I, I have many times woken up, um, brushed my teeth, got dressed and like just sat down and started working like no food. Um, <laughs> I will always have this, but like me not eating until noon or later is not unheard of. Um, it's actually pretty normal. Um, but like, I definitely think for me, um, I use those kind of rituals to, get me back to where I want to be so that I can work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I must admit, I feel like I'm very, I'm the odd one out that way where I can just go. Um, Cause it, it doesn't stop me to like, I, for instance, I don't do coffee in the morning. I find coffee at night helps me sleep. So I leave. Really? It yeah. Um, I have friends who have been uh, like properly diagnosed with ADHD and are, and are medicated for it. And then when I tell them that, they're like, really? Because that's interesting. And I'm like, yup. Um, you know, <laughs> whatever. I, I've learned to live with it. I'm 32. I'm still alive and I'm taking care of myself. Hey, okay. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, um, so yeah, it's some, it's those weird stuff. Um, yeah. I, I Yeah. I just, I find I use those rituals to help me get back on track where I need to be or want to be. Um, so that I can do what I got to do, usually edit. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's very, it's, um, I've, I've heard people that are, are, um, this one there, make my life easier. Um, yeah, I've heard people that are, are very much, uh, 
that can do coffee late at night that they use it in that way uh it's it's uh doesn't keep them up um i don't that that's not me unfortunately <laughs> uh, i can't really drink coffee anymore as much as i i'd love to um like at all coffee. no it's not it doesn't um it it it's too acidic for my stomach and oh um, yeah, yeah yeah so you know again some things get older can't do the same things you you could do when you were younger so you have uh, to boy. make allowances for it already feeling some of that uh i've learned in the the last i want to say six months or so not to to get uncomfy or a little too much sharing but uh i've learned domino's pizza is not my friend at all anymore i mm. uh, cannot do um is it just domino's pizza or pizza in general thank god just domino's pizza is my favorite food in the whole planet i don't mm. know what i'd do if i couldn't eat it um but domino's pizza is really bad and then um mm. and this is a little little pizza tip for the folks out there um costco has amazing pizzas the, the costco's that do the food court you can get a pizza there it is 12.99 it is one of the biggest pizzas out there that you can get as like a large um pepperoni and cheese or cheese they don't do anything else yeah it's delicious it is greasy the way pizza should be um i have found the temptation to eat even half of a pizza is there for me and if i do by god my stomach is like what are you an idiot um because mind you each slice is like the length of my forearm and you get eight of those because it's such a wide, huge pizza. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like one or two of those, you're fine. Don't don't exceed that. But you don't have to have a membership to go in. Um, so right to can, get those pizzas, yeah. Yeah, you can go off the street. Anyone go get the pizzas, go get the hot dogs, the drinks, the ice cream, the chicken nuggets, whatever. Yeah. You just walk in and get it. Um, so there's that. Because uh, yeah, I, it's it's a favorite of mine. Um, they, they have. Um... Yeah, so I, I can't I can't really do gluten anymore. So that's oh, uh, but they have a really good uh, so the um, frozen or the the pre made pizza that they sell there they have a gluten free one that's actually really good. Oh, um, wicked! At, at Costco and and but the other thing I was going to say is um, the Sundays there oh they're, they're, <sighs> they're just really uh, we were Don't craving go. craving them the other day and and I'm like well I kind of have to be careful again get older can't really do as much uh of this the sweet stuff as you'd like so um i i uh, wanted to get some ice cream or jen jen my partner she's like God, should we go and i'm like oh, i'd love to but i just don't think it's a good idea right now so 100%. yeah it's uh good and good and bad when you as you get older you get more you focus your energy in a much more um, uh, productive way. I find, at least for me, I'm, I'm much more when it comes to like what I'm doing. I'm, I'm much more aware of my time, and and therefore I'm getting things done that maybe more things done than I would have when when I was younger. Oh, interesting. But, okay. But the, the same time, uh, yeah, like uh, just trying to figure out like why things aren't working the way that they should is always trying to catch up with your body to find out why you're sore here or, or why this the thing you're eating today doesn't feel good or whatever it is. You're, you're constantly like trying to figure these things out. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things where, where this is the positives and negatives of getting older. That's all it is. Just have to, just have to take each day and and enjoy and, and, you know, that's why I'm not like, I used to be a little bit more when it came to, to, um, not working as productively as I want, I'd be much more down on myself. I'd be like, you know, there's something wrong with me and, and why can't I do this? And, and now I'm a little bit more forgiving. I'm like, you know what? Obviously it's my body's way of saying, you know, you've, you've worked really hard and now you just need to give yourself a little bit of, um, you know, give yourself uh, some, some time to relax, give yourself permission to, um, uh, not have to uh work at the same level as you always do be forgiving yeah. of yourself right and that's something that um it's hard for for people that uh, at least the way i see 
what I'm doing is I only have so many years that I can create and I want to get as much out of those years as I can. But, you know, at the same time, you have to, if you, if you push yourself too hard, you're going to shorten your, your, the lifespan of being able to create. So Mm -hmm. you have to, you know, it's a balance, right? You have to learn how to balance what, um, what's important, what isn't important. you know, hope that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have the time in your life to be able to keep on working. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, okay. Here, here Keith, here's a, a fun question uh, and, and feel free to say pass or whatever, if you don't want to answer it. Um, is this coming from a person who's, who's uh, watching? No, this is, this is all me. Oh, uh, this okay. is just something I've, I've been thinking about based on what you've mentioned to me. Um, a long I can't say a long time, but a couple of years ago, uh, a, a YouTube creator named Zay Frank, who does amazing fun videos, um, was asked about because uh, basically they they had a really good career in creating stuff. They'd stop for a fair bit of time and then they come back to it. Um, and someone had asked them, "What does it feel like to be culturally irrelevant?" Um, and, and I guess what I wanted to ask was cause, cause something like, like aging, not being able to do art. Um, cause you know, our bodies break down, vision goes, your ability to control your hand might go as you age, all that kind of stuff. Um, you seem to be one of the people that is extremely conscious of this. And so like you're squeezing as much out art out of yourself as you can while finding other ways to be creative as well. So that, you know, whatever happens in life for you, you can always be that way. Um, How does the the sort of the process of time and how your ability to create art has changed um, make you feel and think, especially when it comes to sort of what you're personally interested in as a creator and then like the cultural sort of eye shifting away from that? I don't think I really think about it in that way. I mean, I don't really... I, yeah, when you said the like culturally, would you say culturally uh, uh, irrelevant cult, or something? Yeah, culturally irrelevant. I, I create for myself, and then um, hopefully people enjoy what I'm doing. I, I don't think about. I think culturally, it's what what the opposite of that says to me is that you're trying to create things that people, the culture and mass, what's popular are going to want to read or or look at and you have to be careful about that because if you're creating things let's say that's in the zeitgeist let uh, one of the things i think about in this way is like deadpool when the movie came out Mm -hmm. and what i thought was really cool about that movie was that you know it it was pretty true to the comic breaking the fourth wall and all that kind of stuff and it was a it was a marvel character that was hard R and, and did, it felt very much like they're kind of throwing everything, you know, at us because they wanted to, like, it was just, they wanted to do it the way, the way they wanted to do it. Um, and the, you know, producers seemed to be on board with it. Uh, and I mean, I don't know the story of how it was created exactly, but it just felt very much to me like they did a movie the way they wanted to, which wasn't quite the way that Marvel was doing stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. the formula that Marvel has created over, you know, the last decade um, or a couple of decades. And you go, that is the way, at least how, how they could approach certain movies, right? Not necessarily go with the formula, but go with something that is more character driven, that, that plays really strongly with the characters. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I finished watching the movie, I, the first thing I thought was, oh my God, every studio is going to try to do their R rated version of this. And it's not going to work. It doesn't work. Um, unless it's, unless it's appropriate for the story or the character. Yeah. It's got to fit real good too. Yeah. If you have a really cool story, that's important for you to tell and has nothing to do with what everybody else is doing at that moment. Um, And then it just so happens that it does really well. You know, you're going to get 50,000 copycats trying to jump on that ship because they go, well, look at the success this person has. And I kind of have an idea like this. So I'm going to kind of do it myself. 
I don't mean it's okay to do it, but I just think to me, um, if you're trying to chase what's culturally relevant, you're always going to be chasing versus do what you enjoy doing. If it's, if people enjoy it, great. If people don't enjoy it, well, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, and you know, so it's kind of like when they say something like, um, when somebody has gotten, uh, uh, big, uh, you know, like all of a sudden discovered. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you go, it's like, well, discovered in what way I've been working really hard at this for the last decade. Um, and then I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. So there's some, some luck to it, but persistence is, is part of it. And now people are, are seeing what I'm doing and everything that I've done before that is all of a sudden like culturally important. Well, mm. why wasn't it culturally important five years ago? Right. Well, yeah, so it's exactly. Kind of, it's, 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 it's kind of a bit of a fickle thing, right? I mean, it's just, it's just people, unfortunately, um, you have, when you're, when you're dealing with, with money, when you're dealing with what's going to sell and, you know, sometimes things come out that, um, you oftentimes see things that shouldn't have ever been created as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh well, let me phrase it this way. It's, it, I, I, it's fine. It's been created, but are you doing it? because you're trying to make more money or are you doing it because you really genuinely think it's a great idea and you just happen to, you know, happens to be that there's more than one zombie story to tell. Right. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. I mean, um, I, I think that, um, yeah. So, so uh, also, I don't know the, the person you're talking about. Um, I don't know what kind of popularity they had. Um, I think that, as a, as a, as a creator, uh, you sometimes go through, uh, times when, when people are, uh, wanting to work with you and you get a lot of in, an influx of, of jobs coming in. And then there's times when you, you don't, um, and you have to really work hard to, to find work. Um, you know, and that's just that, that ebbs and flows. Uh, sometimes it's just, you know, weird things, something falls through that you've been working on for years that, that was completely out of your control. And then it's like, well, where have you been for the last couple of years? And you have nothing to show for. And it's like, I kind of do, but I can't show it because it's not happening. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, there, there's all different reasons why somebody may seem to fall out of the spotlight for a while. And then all of a sudden mm. they come back in. Um, I don't know. I, I, in this day and age where we're like, we have these social influencer types that make their money uh, with how many people look at their, you know, whatever uh, reel or, or TikTok yeah. video they've created or whatever it is they've done. Um, hey, if you figure it out, if it's you, if you're passionate about it and it's something that you want to do a lot, sure, go ahead. But, you know, I, for me personally, I haven't, it's not been about like becoming more popular and getting more people to um, like, like what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do. And that being said, I do love that. I have people that love what I do. Like to me, that just, that's amazing. Like I feel completely great about it, but um, you know, like I've always, I've personally, I've always had a little bit of a weariness of getting, I've, I've always had a bit of a fear of like something I've done kind of all of a sudden going viral because they think that, there's, um, you, 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 it's hard to control, um, mm -hmm. what, you know, all of a sudden you get more eyes on something and people, people, as soon as you start going up, they want to tear you down. Right. Um, yeah. And I, and I think that I don't, I, to me personally, I don't think that's something I would quite enjoy. So I feel for some of those people that have been thrust into, you know, all of a sudden they, they've created a comic book that, um, everybody's looking at, and then all of a sudden you get people coming out of the woodwork going, I had that idea first. And you're like, I, you know, you met me at a show yeah. and I told you about my idea. And I'm like, I don't remember meeting you. I don't remember you telling me about this idea, you know, that kind of thing. So that you have, um, uh, you know, all of a sudden you have people that, that want to hate on you. You want to, you know, they critique you for something that, um, you know, you wasn't intended to be critiqued, right? Um, yep. In, in that way. And you, it's, you know, I mean, listen, you put something out there, that's, that's what happens. But, um, 
Uh, anyway, I think I'm kind of going a little bit off, off the message there, but uh, yeah, so culturally relevant doesn't really, I don't think about it. So, awesome. Did that I, answer your question? <laughs> yes. No, it absolutely does. And it, it's interesting because um, you sort of got me thinking about what you were saying there about you don't you don't think about it going something you've created going viral or getting super popular and in fact you maybe fear it a little um because with the way you were talking it, it definitely sounds like and, and i believe this is the correct approach to to anything creative you love the process of creating and yeah. having fans who like it having people who want to support you is sort of the bonus um whereas yeah. i feel like a lot of people who create content um and are extremely successful at it my concern not not knowing any of these people obviously my concern is they're doing it for the publicity the clicks the likes the views and if they happen to like the process that's the bonus and i think that's where it's flipped is you should love right. the thing you're doing and success should be the bonus, not the other way around. You shouldn't love success and just maybe hope you like it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, that's exactly, you said it very well. I think to me, it's always been the journey. It's always been, uh, and I've talked about failure before. I, I embrace failure. I think failure, when, when, I, when I mean failure, I always mean that you get up again, right? Failure. Exactly. Not, yeah. That you're, so all those, when you, when you push through, like this week, I'm pushing through. I would consider to some degree it's a bit of failure because I'm not working at the level that uh, in regards to the amount of product I'm, I normally put out, I'm not working at that level that I normally do. So it's a, it's a bit of a failure, um, but I get through it because I'm learning, you know, to, it's just learning, well, what do I, what, how do I navigate through that? How do I make sure I get other things done? And so yeah. again, I just rearranged my schedule, which is something I don't know if I would have done in the past that would have been like, no, I got to keep on pushing through and, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, it, it, to me, it's always been about the journey and learning from the process. And, and uh, that's the reward for me. And then once I put it out there for people, um, it's, it's no longer mine. I just I feel that um, people are going to interpret whatever I create in their own way. They're going to fill in the blanks and uh, whatever mind's eye they have. They're going to create the world that I've created that I started to create, but they're going to fill it in and, and who knows how they see it. And so mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that um, because it's no longer mine, you know, I can't really, if they see it in a way that I necessarily didn't interpret uh, and it may not be the way I wanted them to interpret, I can't take offense to it. It's like, that's how, yeah. they, you know, that's how they see it. And, and, you know, it's out there now. Right. Um, Whereas, yeah, somebody who's uh, um, all about perception of what their what their brand is, it's very important for people to see things a certain way. Um, mm -hmm. Or I guess if, if people see it a different way, as long as people are looking at it, they're okay with it, right? It's it's a weird yeah. kind of double-edged sword of, you know, I guess bad publicity in that case is good for them because as long as they don't lose sponsors that um, – they're getting more people talking about what they've created and maybe more people will, will um, join in and, and, you know, now advertisers can, can kind of, Oh, you know, now you've got a hundred thousand more, more views on this one. Um, yeah. I'd like to sponsor you. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. We do live in that kind of world now that um, it doesn't really interest me a whole lot, to be honest with you. I've never, and I've, I've, you know, when I, when I first started seeing it, um, seeing what could be done uh i kind of figured what you needed to do i just never really i know how much work it, you have to put into it that is the other thing too i mean um these influencers are putting a lot of work into oh, what God. they're doing i don't want to i don't want to say it's something like oh you know they're just these vapid uh you know they don't work really hard things are coming to them because of the way they look or whatever it is they're selling no they work really hard at it i i know that i just um I, I just think that there's a, for me, um, I have a real, if you're creating something that there, I like following some of these people that are doing something they love and yeah. they're like, well, might as well show people what I'm doing and like what we're doing. Right. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, this 
being something, if this were to, to get bigger and people were more people were liking what we're doing and they wanted to um, understand process and they have their own questions about it, I think that's that's great. I, I, I would love that. Um, I just, uh, yeah, it's got to be something that we love to do. And of course, if you have sponsors that go, hey, we love what you're doing and we, we don't want to change anything, but we want to, you know, so you get um, some cool, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like some kind of art companies that want to do uh, some kind of collabs with us or, uh, you know, the some Adobe, kind of, Wacom. Yeah, yeah, some kind of pro or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Whatever um, video editing equipment company would want to. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's we're doing what we're doing anyway, and, and might as well, you know, if somebody wants to, to pay us for it, um, why not? Right. Actually, you know what? Good segue. Um, speaking of which, um, a really quick self promo, shameless self promo. Um, for the folks out there watching, whether you're watching live with us now uh, or you're going to catch this at some point later, one, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying. I hope you're marveling at Keith's artistic ability as much as I am because it's insane getting to watch this. Um, but if you'd like to support the channel and, and support the show, um, you can uh, down in the, the doobly-doo for the show on YouTube, on Twitch, uh, Instagram may or may not have it. I'm not sure. Um, you can go, though, uh, to the link uh, and support the show. Uh, you can, one, sign up uh, for a mailing list, so first name, last name, email, um, and you can also support the show. Uh, so if you'd like, you can give us somewhere between five and 50 bucks. Uh, it would be much appreciated to pay for subscription services, pay for pencils like this thing that Keith uses, pay for drawing supplies he might need. Um, well, whatever the, the money we might need to be able to do what we do, that's what it goes for. Yeah, so yeah if, exactly. Yeah, if you'd like to support, that would be fantastic. If not, that's okay too. I just hope you're enjoying the art uh, and yeah, we'll keep marveling at what Keith does. So here it is. Um, also, Keith, I, I'm, sh oh, the, the wrinkles that you're rendering on this guy's face are crazy to me. Um, <laughs> I, I love this. Um, like the, the kind of like, I know it's not real. I mean, it is kind of realism, but like one of my favorite faces in, I think all of Hollywood is Danny Trejo, um, mm. who, if no one knows who he is, go look up, uh, Danny Trejo, um, he is um, he was in a film called well in a lot, but he, he his main big film that I know him from is Machete, um, or the uh, Desperado Once Upon a Time of, uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Dust to uh, Dawn. Yes, Dust to Dawn. Oh my God, yeah, huge, huge film. Um, the man's face is amazing and extremely detailed, and the stuff that you're drawing here. All these, the wrinkles around the eyes, the forehead, the, the loose hairs. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, okay, fun art question uh, ever, before we wrap up the show here. Um, the idea of, like, knowing when your, your piece is done. Um, like, I, I guess, like, you could say, well, this, this piece will be done when you've drawn the man for which you're, you're sketching from. Um, when you have the same amount of wrinkles, the same amount of loose hairs, the same amount of whatever, um, the argument could also be made, well, you're, you're done when you hit a point that it conveys the same feeling. Um, or, you know, you, you're done when the show's over, you know, cause you have an hour <laughs> cool down at the end of the day, whatever. Uh, but like, how do you generally speaking know when something like this is done? Um, uh, basically if it's just for fun, um, I don't want to be spending too much time on, uh, something that, you know, I have, I have a work to do. Right. So, yeah. um, I, I'll give myself like an hour and just call it a day. Um, I can generally figure out like, um, you know, actually, I want to keep. I can generally like figure out like how long it's going to take me to do something, and, and 
you know. Now that that being said, sometimes I'll work on something like this and I'll be like, ah, okay, this is it. I'm not going to, I don't know where else to go from here. And then I'll um, look back on it later and go, oh, I have some ideas for it and, and you know, spend a little bit extra time on it, just depending on the piece, if I really like the piece or if I um, feel that, uh, uh, you know, there's something to this piece that's really just uh, unique, right? Um <laughs> because I'm not getting paid for this, you just kind of have to, uh, uh, ultimately you have to, uh, walk away <laughs> really, Fair. you know, I, I guess is the best way to put it. You have to walk away because you're not getting paid for this. So, you know, um, as fun as it is, and I think there's a lot of value in, um, doing, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, projects, you learn how to, how to, um, do certain things in project uh, process that maybe you want to try out for something you are getting paid for. Right. So, you know, it's one of those things where, um, everyone is going to be different. Uh, but generally speaking, if this is just for fun, I don't want to spend any more than like 40 minutes to an hour on it. Um, if it's, um, if there's something special about it, I may spend a bit of extra time, but I wouldn't do it in one sitting. I would probably, uh, uh, when I, if I need to warm down for the night, um, I'll, I'll come, come back to it or another day or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it just, I, I think I answered your question. I, I generally know when something needs to be finished though. Uh, mm. I keep saying jumping. Uh, just because, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, I can't really work on it anymore. So. Yeah. You, it's spent. Um, I have a, a technical question about Photoshop here. Um, sure. I'm not sure how you did it, but the neckline where you've got that, that clear black line dividing shirt and skin, um, which is a completely broken black line. Sorry. Wh wh where, where, so. On the, the shirt right here, right? You've got yeah. this nice black line that's clearly like shirt skin. Uh, right, yeah. But it's not perfect, right? Like up in the edge there on the side, it's broken. It's got like a squiggle over here because the shirt ripples. That's not a broken line or it's a broken line. So if you like color drop that, it all gets screwy. Um, how did you get the skin tone to so perfectly like trace that? Because I, I, you did it like so quick. I didn't catch oh. it. Uh, so I used the last lasso, the lasso tool, and I just trace. Oh. That's it. Well, damn. You know. All right. <laughs> I, you know, I can't say I'm the best when it comes to using the lasso tool, but um, I, I, I guess I've done it long enough that that I generally got the, the right shape pretty quickly. Um, but um, yeah, I, you know, I mean, a lot of this stuff you just it's just repetition. You just do it over and over and over and it eventually becomes, you know, secondhand. Awesome. And just as a quick compare and contrast here, that's the original photograph. And that's what you've drawn. That's crazy. Yeah. Love it. Um, so we're, we're 60 seconds out from our hour, Keith, uh, almost at eight o'clock time to, to pack up, sleep, eat, do the things you want to do. Um, that being said, a uh, quick announcement. You will be joining me next week along with um, you are Keith Gratchow, along with Kevin Manklo and Mike Ruth uh, to do a, a spring drawing. Um, the idea that I, I sent along to you guys uh, is about rebirth. Mm -hmm. uh, I have strictly to, to Mike's dislike, I have barred Swamp Thing and Man Thing um, because that is sort of Mike's thing yep. and it fits with spring and rebirth and all that stuff. But I was like, no, nah, let's do something different. Um, so yes, we will be live streaming that next week. I will be posting about it. I'll tag you in it, obviously. Uh, but for the folks that they're watching either now or in the next six days, five days, look out for that. Uh, that being said, Keith, thank you so much once again for joining me uh, on this amazing sketchy goodness. And my God, the rendering. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I appreciate it. So just uh, to let everybody know, I'm going to be 
at the first anniversary of the Hero's Tale in Cambridge, Ontario on Saturday, this Saturday, uh, the 13th, I believe. It's from 11 to 5. And Amazing. there's going to be creators there. Um, I, I think Jason Lowe's going to be there. Stephanie Cook. Um, yep. Myself, Becca. Uh, Martin Slam Duncan. Um, a bunch of people are going to be there. And there's going to be uh, Spider-Man. It's going to be there. Ooh. And Cupcakes. I've, uh, they had good cupcakes last year, so I, I know that the baker is going to be, I think the same baker they're using for those cupcakes is back this year. Mm. Uh, you can pick up some collectibles and comics and graphic novels. They're going to have great um, uh, deals going, happening. Uh, they've got a great selection. It's a really great location on uh, Cambridge, uh, off of King Street. I'm forgetting the address at the, the moment. Um but uh, it's called The Hero's Tale. So uh, bring your family. It's a very family-friendly store uh, from 11 to 5 uh, this Saturday. Uh, that would be 634 King Street East Cambridge. That's right. Absolutely, yes. folks. Go check it out. See Keith in person. Meet the other amazing creators. Pick up books. Support the store. Um, get some good cupcakes. Oh, my God. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, as always, folks, like Comment down below what you think of anything that we talked about, what you think of Keith's drawing, uh, and subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time. Golden age to present, digest to oversize, never miss new comic day. Yeah, no surprise, so where's my no prize? Check the letter columns, can't find issue two, yeah, collector problems.